In this video series, we're going to go deeper into the concept of polynomials. Primarily, we're going to be focusing on the different shapes of polynomials and how to evaluate uh, polynomials. So the bottom line is, first, we need, need to know what is a polynomial. And so a polynomial, we can see mathematically by using function notation, a polynomial you're going to have your leading coefficients of your terms, which that's what the a's are. And you notice your degrees, nth power and minus one power and so on and so on, second power, first power. What's happening is they are decreasing. And we learned that with synthetic division is that when you're writing your polynomial in standard form, your exponents have to decrease by degree. And so that's what the definition says a function with one variable where the variable must have an exponent in the form x to the n where n must be a non-negative integer and coefficients are real numbers and so we can see you know examples of polynomials here and not a polynomial all of our coefficients we have real number for our coefficients we have non-negative integers for our exponents however we look at our not a polynomial we can see here right away, we have a negative exponent. And that means it cannot be a polynomial. We see in this example, you know, we are dividing by x here and we're dividing by y here. And remember when we learned our properties of exponents, you know, five over x, if we were to write it, with a negative exponent, it's five times x to the negative first. So again, you have a negative exponent. So when you're dividing by a variable, you're actually using a negative exponent, which is not allowed in the definition of a polynomial. And so that is how to distinguish between a polynomial and not a polynomial. Look for real number coefficients and look for non-negative, look for positive integer exponents. Well, what are some different types of polynomials that we have then? Well, some of the basic shapes that we have are linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, and quintic. Now, we've examined linear and quadratic primarily now out of the past couple chapters. Let's take a look at this. A linear is a straight line, and it has one zero. So the key from this part of the video is to make sure you can connect the number of zeros with the shape of the graph and the type of function represented. A quadratic, we learned, is U-shaped, and so you're going to have two zeros. A cubic, you can see, rises from the bottom left, comes up, down again, and then up. There's one, two, three zeros, so three zeros tells me that it's cubic. We have a quartic function, and we see this one. We have one, two, three, four zeros. A quintic function we have five zeros. And so we need to connect the number of zeros to the type of function. Quintic for five, quartic for four, cubic for three, quadratic for two, and one for linear. So let's try this out. We're going to identify the polynomial function represented from here, and let's go ahead and use our zeros to assist us with this. And so I look at the first graph, I see it is U-shaped, so that right away should tell me it's a quadratic from what we have in our prior knowledge. I also see there are two zeros. So therefore, it is a quadratic. I take a look at this example, number two. It's a straight line. Line means linear. It has one zero. So this is a linear function. And the more complicated the shape gets, that's why it's important you connect the number of zeros to the type of function. So I see three, four, five zeros. And so I need to make the connection that five zeros represents a quintic function. If we look at example four, I can see I have one, two, three zeros. Three zeros represents a cubic function.
And lastly, I have number five with one, two, three, four zeros. And four zeros represents a quartic function. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you a heads up. Um, a lot of students get quadratics and quartics confused because whenever you hear the prefix quad, you think of four. However, in mathematics, you know, quadratic has two zeros. So my advice to you is to not, when it comes to quadratics, maybe not use the zeros, but use the shape. We know quadratics are U-shaped. So don't worry about the zeros to help you identify it. Just go with that concept. And that way you can realize that this is not U-shaped. So it can't be quadratic, therefore it has to be quartic. That's a common error that occurs. So this video was meant to help us identify if we have a polynomial and what their shapes are from their graphs.